As we've studied gases, we've simplified the model of the gas to help us to derive equations of proportion which apply to all gases under all conditions. However, gases are not actually as simple as our idealized model suggests that they are. And because of that, the equations of proportion that we've come up with, although they work under most conditions, there are some extreme conditions when they no longer work because of the gas not being as simple as the ideal model. In other words, because the gas is a real gas, not an ideal gas. The word ideal means as we would wish it to be, according to the model in this case, according to the simplified model of kinetic theory. In this lesson, we look at those conditions when the ideal gas equations don't give us the correct answer that we actually find when we do measurements with a real gas. The differences between real and ideal gas behavior really come down to two main simplifications in kinetic theory. The first one is that there are no intermolecular forces between the molecules of a gas. In our simplification, in other words, in our ideal gas model, we said there were no intermolecular forces between the particles of a gas, but in fact, a real gas does have some weak intermolecular forces. Under most conditions, those forces are so weak that it doesn't really make much difference to the predicted states of the gas, predicted by the equations, and what we would actually measure in a laboratory. But at very low temperatures, the gas molecules move so slowly that they come close enough to one another that the intermolecular forces between them become strong relative to what they were before. So they're now so strong that they're not negligible anymore. And so the real behavior we measure differs quite significantly, quite a lot from that predicted by the ideal gas equations. In fact, at low temperatures, gases change phase. They become liquids and solids. And when they're no longer gases, of course, the laws, the equations, the proportions of the ideal gas no longer apply because they're not a gas. This is a graph of pressure against temperature. An ideal gas just has a straight line because pressure is directly proportional to temperature. And that straight line goes all the way through the origin if we're using a Kelvin scale. So this predicts that at a temperature of zero Kelvin, the gas would still be a gas and it would have a pressure of zero Pascals. But in fact, it would no longer be a gas at that temperature. And so the real gas ceases to follow this line at cold temperatures. It just stops being a gas and so the line no longer applies. The second simplification of kinetic theory which causes a difference between real and ideal gas behavior is that according to the ideal gas model, the molecules themselves in the gas have no volume. All the volume of the gas comes from the spaces between the molecules. But of course molecules do actually have volume, although very little. So in a real gas, there is molecule volume. Now under most conditions, that molecule volume is so small in comparison to the volume of the spaces between the gas molecules that the molecule volume is negligible. And so the proportion equations predict pretty well what we actually measure in the laboratory. But when pressure is high, and so the gas is squashed quite a lot into a small volume, Volume, then the molecules volume becomes significant relative to the spaces between the molecules and so can no longer be ignored as insignificant. And as a result, under high pressures, the gas laws, the ideal gas equations, they don't really predict what we actually measure in the laboratory. Pressure and volume are inversely proportional, so if you plot them, we get a hyperbola. A real gases reading, though, will be a little bit higher, especially at high pressures than what this ideal gas equation gives us. And that's because the real gases molecules themselves actually do take up some volume. So we can see at a particular pressure, a real gases volume is higher than an ideal gases volume. Because of these differences between real and ideal gases, a variable we have ignored up to now is actually important, especially in those extreme cases of low temperature and high pressure, and that is type 
of gas because some types of gases are closer to ideal gas behavior than others. Remember that we said the big difference between real and ideal gas behavior is these two points that real gases do actually have intermolecular forces and real gases do actually have molecular volume. So of course the gases which are going to be most similar to the ideal gas should have very weak intermolecular forces and very small molecular volumes. Which gases fit those descriptions? The noble gases have very weak intermolecular forces because they are nonpolar molecules. So they only have London forces. In other words, induced dipole forces, which are very weak. And the smallest of these, helium, also has the smallest molecular volume so helium is most like an ideal gas. In other words, if we actually measure its properties in the laboratory and then do the calculations and then compare what we measured with the calculations, we would most often find a very close correspondence and very little difference between our measurements and the calculations for helium. Whereas for other gases, especially non-noble gases, there would be a bigger difference between what we measured and what the equation predicted, especially at low temperatures and high pressures.